we are historically shifting from the attitude this country had in its universities, in its public statements, in the minds of most of its people, much of the last half century, a period often called neoliberalism or globalism or globalization. The idea was that the United States would do best if there were no barriers to trade and capital moving around the world. We should bring everybody into the global free market. No government interference, no letting politicians mingle in. The economy will work best for everybody if everybody's free to wheel and deal and buy and sell and invest and borrow as the market dictates. You know, it's the application of one understanding of Adam Smith to the world today. And so the United States was the champion of open markets, free trade, no government interference. It pressured the World Bank and the Monetary International Monetary Fund and other organizations to promote that all over the world. That period is over. This is a historic end of that period. What we have now is rampant economic nationalism. The government, far from being told to stay away from the economy, not to mingle, not to interfere, not to render it inefficient, but to leave it to the free market, all of that's gone. The government is called upon to enter into, to control trade. You can't trade with him. He can't trade with her. She can't do. We The tariff on this one, the tariff on that one. The government is spending huge amount of money subsidizing certain industries because we want to make the decision for companies where you locate. We're going to have bring you here by giving you a tax-based subsidy. The government is managing everything. The government is literally brought in because it seems that the American leadership has given up on globalization, given up on neoliberalism. Not because millions of people lost their jobs because of it, which they did. Not because it widened the gap between rich and poor, which it did. That's not their problem. Their problem is that the domination of the world economy by the United States was undercut by the neoliberal globalization. Why? Because capitalists around the world did what capitalists always do. They looked for the best profit situation. And the capitalists who once found it in the United States, in England, in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Japan, figured out that they could make more money by moving their production to China, which in huge numbers for the last 40 years is what they did. The Chinese, likewise, looking at the situation, welcomed them. The Chinese decided they would not, over the last 40 years, follow the Soviet Union and have the entire economic system owned and operated by the government. Russia had gone quite far. The Chinese made a decision not to go that far. The Chinese Communist Party leadership made the decision that their best interests would be served by a system that included a large private capitalist industrial bloc. Soviet Union did not allow that. And a large government-owned and operated bloc within the Chinese economy. And the private capitalist bloc could be foreigner-owned, American, Japanese, British, Italian, or Chinese owned. And that's what they've done. They operate a mixed system under the control of the Communist Party. That's an alternative to the Soviet Union system. It's also an alternative to the American system. That alone would be a historic new way to think about economic, economic growth and success. But more important even than that in our immediate situation was the fact that that Chinese innovation, what the Chinese call socialism with Chinese characteristics, this mixed system 
under the control of a communist party grew much faster than the Soviet Union had or than the United States could. And for decade after decade, they made this difference clear so that by Mr. Trump's presidency, the United States, in a kind of peculiar way, woke up and realized that they needed to change because the system that had been very profitable from 1980 to 2010, we had an explosion of profitability, an explosion of our stock market. We'd done real well, but the Chinese grew faster. The Chinese have become the United States' first serious economic competitor in a century. Wow. And this war exposes all of that. It has exposed that the world is no longer in neoliberal globalization phase. It has passed into economic nationalism phase, and the United States isn't dominant the way it was, not even close. 